I'm kind of excited about Rare Whiskey Friday today. Yes, yes. Because we got some weird shit going on. Okay. One. Funky adventure? Who knew that Tasmania was like the hotbed of Australian new whiskey, kick-ass whiskey? So, I keep hearing like little glimmers and sparks and little, yeah. little things happening in the Tasmania. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rare Whiskey Friday, basically, these aren't necessarily giant brands, but brands that uh, are really hard to get your hands on because they don't have a lot of distribution, often going to be small brands here. We're going to give first impressions because we got to go through several of these. How many are we doing? We've got five. Huh. <laughs> Take a deep breath. We're going to have the best business meeting after this. Love business. It'll be grand. Love all the business. <laughs> <laughs> this one kind of tore on me on that. Oh, so the, the timing of this is what was. Yeah, that's the problem. Because I was doing the thing. Yeah, and then, and then, then it the, died. The momentum the died. And that just, okay. Sullivan's Cove. This is from William Vong. Okay. And he was also a whiskey sommelier. Oh, right on. Right on. He brought all. William Vong, you magnificent bastard. He showed up with all of these Australian whiskeys. Now, I'm excited about this one because this is Patrick McGuire. You were excited about this one. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> but he he's this whiskey has won World Awards. He's won Distiller Awards. Hold on. Distiller the nose, of the Year. Here's what I'm referring to. The nose is presenting... With this one thing that I just don't like. It's the, like, the sour, sappy note that yeah. you find pretty often. You know, it's not... Uh, and more craft, like smaller distillers. Craft distillers yeah. here in the States. Here you get this kind of really funky grain intense. I like think a, it's just a wider cut, right? So yeah. it's just a wider cut that's pulling in more of the malt phenol low end congeners that it just. Okay, so here's my, my hope. Oh, we're still on the nose. Here's what my hope is going in on the taste. We're re getting this presentation on the nose that's reminding us of the sour piney blah 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 note that mm -hmm. we've got many times before. And it's not our favorite note. Some people may like it, fine. But. There's this little <clears throat> slice, this sliver of hope that I'm thinking maybe on the taste, this doesn't jump in the sour direction. Maybe this is like a head fake and just it delivers this big body of... It could go into bread I'm, instead of sour. I'm saying don't go up into the sour, go down into the yeah. heftier... It did it. It came back. Oh no, it doesn't go. It's totally tasty. That is. It's that was way weird. more vanilla we were, bread. We were both braced for the sour, grainy, sappy. No, it's like, oh. it's fresh sliced sourdough bread. Sourdough bread with honey and some kind of jam. That's definitely what the finish is. <clears throat> yeah, definitely the finish. I think there's a couple of different things that, before that before you get to that finish. There's some kind of jam oh. note. Oh, and what the, kind? And then the double finish. The, like preserves. The finish of the finish, I'm getting some vanilla now. Oh yeah, no, that hit me right in the middle. Okay, okay. Maybe it re-emerges. The, the first, the blush of this was a blur. I'm gonna go back. Yeah. Vanilla cream, fresh sourdough bread. And then a, like a malty, like a beery malt. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it though. Yeah, it's pretty good. They're doing cool shit. And the, damn good. one of the cool things is that <clears throat> Uh, Tasmania disproportionately holds a lot of awards for Australian whiskey. I mean, that whole, and that's cool. That whole area down there is just those devils. <laughs> I'm so upset. You, you know. I know. That I was, was just. That I was, know I was bad. <laughs> I know. That whole area is cool. Sorry. Man. I've been to Australia, right? I, I'd like to make my uh, way over to New, uh, New Zealand one of these days. Australia's beautiful. So a bunch of Australia. All right, we're doing a glass rinse. You haven't been. Right. Yeah, I don't have any more comments. No, hold on, hold on. That's just hold on. Like. Oh, I have never been to Australia. It happened. It's the first time ever. Rex has been somewhere I've not been. It happened. So, I've been to a cool place that he has never been. Everything I know about Australia is from Crocodile Dundee and The Rabbit Proof Fence. One of the most heart-wrenching movies you will ever see in your entire life. This one is another Tasmanian whiskey. Okay. Oh, Tasmanian Day. Founded by a bunch of dairy farmers. Are they all Tasmanian whiskeys? Yeah. Well, oh. not all of them. Three oh. of them are. Okay. Also, William Vaughn. William Vaughn, you magnificent bastard. Fight. 
He got double bastarded. He got double bastarded because yeah. it was taking a long time yeah. for us to get to these. <laughs> um, Hellier's oh. Road. It's named after Hellier is a name of somebody, and so it's called Hellier's Road. Wow. I am in space side, man. I am. Yeah, in this one doesn't have any of that weird funk, but it does have this overly fruity, it's like, like a, fruit juice smell. It's like a super sweet fruity with a dash of rose water. You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. Sweet dessert wine. White dessert wine. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, um, uh, what's the one that we had in our cask? Uh, Senso. Uh, you think, oh, you or, think Or, yeah, or that direction. That I honey think, sweet but I think dessert wine. Yeah, but more of just actual sugar. Yeah. Involved in that, yeah. Because it's got all the... Beautifully, like, like sweet is the name of the game we're, we're talking about. Yeah, very about. much. Sweet, desserty, super friendly. The this proof, is 10 years old. The proof has to be in the 40s. 46.2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a little flat. Wow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is the polar opposite of experience of what happened oh, yeah. with the Sullivan's. The Sullivan's is that like... That was the deep, rich malt. Well, the everything. Sullivan's, you're like bracing yourself on the nose. And then you get in there, it's like, oh, there's some interesting things. This, your guard is lit down entirely. Yeah. But there's the there's some... Intense, heavier, thicker, uh, almost challenging, almost challenging flavors on that taste. It's far more of the bitterness of mm -hmm. the grass bitterness notes. That's bizarre how sweet that nose is and how it's earthy it's, and grassy. There it is. It's earthy, it's grassy. I'm not going to say vegetal because it's not quite there because there's still the sweet still shows up, yeah. but not nearly to the extent. You would expect based on that nose. Still cool though. Yeah, I'm digging it. But yeah, oh, duh, I want to pick this apart, man. It's I a, know, I know, you can't do it. It's the first impression. Dump it and rinse it. It's the first impressions. So my, this is also William Vaughn. Yeah. But uh, previously, this was my favorite Australian whiskey. Okay. Right here, Lark. Yeah. Uh, the only one I've ever gotten from Lark was one of their 200 milliliter sample bottles. Okay. Remember we had it? It looked like a no. flask. We've I we remember, tasted it. I remember, yes, I remember the lark. I'm trying. Yeah. To not just remember the brand, I'm trying to remember the actual whiskey. No, but uh, that was the only one we had. So we're sort of re-reviewing this one. But this is uh, this is since then, and it's called the classic cask. And let's hope it's good. I actually really like these bottles. They're unstable, but I like them. Yeah, a little bit tippy. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's here's a little. A little, uh, little insider's tip for anybody that's going to be starting a distillery, putting some brands on bottles, and hopefully getting some distribution. If you ever have a bottle shape like this, if it ever gets onto a bar, every bar in the world is going to do this. They will do that. Yeah. And nobody will ever, ever, ever see this sitting on the shelf. Yep. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why so many bottles are square or round. Yeah. It's just uh, because face it out. Yeah. If it, if there's ever a narrow angle, they're gonna sh they're gonna save the space and put it on the bar like that. So this is wow. in between those two. It's both malty funk and slightly vanilla honey sweet. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I, so here's what I'm digging about the stuff coming out of the Tasmania. There is this Tasmania too. Tasmania mm -hmm. too. Yeah. The amount of body they're putting in here. They're not going for low proof, thin, you know, mass market flavors. They're actually going for. Uh, let's get some some body, some intensity, some character in now, these whiskeys. In theory, this is half peated. Oh, shut your filthy face! Your filthy face, lying. So lightly peated, like like across, the same way across the internet. Your filthy lies are yeah. infecting people. You say peaty? There's no peaty. What I'm not getting it in the nose at all. It could be presenting as a, a little bit of an earthiness. Taste it. Of an earthiness on that nose. Taste it. There's a dry, slightly ashy note. Oh, yeah, ash. There you go. Yeah, but it's not strong. It means they, even though they peated, they did really narrow cuts. Well, it's stronger on the taste than in the nose. The yeah. nose, you're like, I can imagine an earthiness. On the taste, you get that ashy bit. I actually like this one uh, no. better than the other two in the taste. On the taste. The nose, my favorite was Hellier's Road. I agree. The taste, my favorite is Lark. Uh, yeah, okay. You know, this. Tr I think this show would be so much more interesting if you and I had wildly different preferences. I know. They're pretty, you know, within like a 10 oh. to 15% variation of what you like and I like. They're usually pretty close. You're into the aftertaste of it right now, right? Yeah. Cocoa and coffee. 
just exploded with chocolate covered espresso beans for some reason. No? You're annoyingly right. Oh, probably. yeah. <laughs> 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 ah, ah! Oh, thank God. Oh, did you guys see that? <sighs> None of, all the bottles were fine. A Glen Karen fell on a carpet. I just didn't think that that was going to come apart like that. Okay, this is from Mark Patton. We've got two things from Mark Patton. A nose of adrenaline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Patton, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> So he wrote notes because these are both. Mark Patton lives in South Korea. Hawaii X Premium. Mark Patton Hawaii. is a whiskey sommelier. Oh, right on. In South Korea, just kicking ass and taking names, introducing all of South Korea to amazing whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he sent us a couple of rice spirits. So I'm gonna get them both out at the same time. Okay. Um, so this so one. So rice still can be. It's considered a grain. A rice can still be a, a whiskey. A whiskey. Yeah, because it is. A gr now these came from South Korea. Yeah. So these didn't have to go through any of the American barrel whatever. regulation. Okay. Crap. So that didn't touch a barrel. The bottle. No, it did. <gasps> it you like the bottle, don't you? Feels. That frosted glass. Yeah. Oh. You know it's what? very sochu and and sake right. and that frosted put glass. Your, put your fingers on that. Oh yeah. Just stroke it. Just feels good. Right. Okay. So this is, and I'm going to pronounce these wrong, Hawaii X Premium, and this is Ilpum uh, Jinro 1924. So, let's start with this one. Now you said that touched the barrel. In theory. Why? Because it's... What it says is... It had to be no time at all. This is a company, 10 years in white oak. Mm. That was the rumor. I wonder if there's a comparison before and after, and the after one is somewhere else in the tower. Because wait, this was ten years in an oak barrel. I'm not feeling it. I'm not seeing ten years in oak barrel. Color almost clear. He yeah. says. How? I don't know. Maybe they filter it. Woo! Wow, that's a. Wow, that is. Wow, it's like old lady farts. <laughs> old lady farts. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's just, now I can't get that out of my head. No, it's, it's like old furniture. It's a, it's but a sweet. It's the old furniture, like your old dusty ass grandparents furniture. You sit down and there's the kick up of the, the, of the dust. I feel like there were two that Mark gave us in here and there's only one in front of me right now. You know what, the, you know what And is? this is the before and after. Because I think the after has to be. This is probably on the nose. Totally different. One of the most Vegetal things I've ever smelled. Let's this just is, assume this is not the aged one. Okay. This is the new make version of the aged one. Fine, because but he but the note said it's Yeah, but I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that this you is ten can't years put old. Ten years in a barrel and then this wait, hold on, this is twenty-five percent. Did you know that? Yeah. Twenty-five percent ABV. Okay, so this is a very not this isn't whiskey. Legally it wouldn't be considered a whiskey. You know what it smells like? Here's the thing. I, I won't be I won't be silly. I won't be ridiculous. It smells like broccoli. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar. Yep. Wow, it's kind of invisible. Oh. I man. was expecting way more flavor. Sake has more flavor than that. Sake? Sake. This actually tastes sake. more like sake. And sake has more flavor. Yes. Very on the the nose is for real. I mean it's very present. It's very dramatic. But the taste is very light and delicate and if I dig was, that. If it was a whiskey, I'd pick it apart a little bit more. Yeah, no, I mean, if I was drinking this in place of sake, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, I actually like the taste. This one is Hawaii? Hawaii? Hawaii. Hawaii. X Premium. We're yet Kavalon people. Yeah. Tell us how to do it. 41%. Yeah. Oh. Bourbon barrels. Okay. Man. It's the first soju bottled at whiskey proof in Korea. Soju? So remind well, soju is a rice style, right? Right. It's a style of alcohol. Mm -hmm. It's the first one bottled at a high proof, whiskey level proof. So it is a whiskey. Mm -hmm. No, well, I mean, by U.S. standards, technically it's a grain. Yes, it could probably be called a whiskey because it's like a rice type of deal, and it's the high enough proof. And what did they say high proof was? Forty-one. Forty-one. <laughs> okay. Well, compared to soju and sake, let me introduce you to. My 60 proof. Yeah, let me introduce you to George Stagg Jr. He's kind of like, you call that a proof? This, this is, is proof. A proof. 
Well, so we're not really talking about notes on the nose here. They're oh, I really cool. like the right. taste on that. I'm still on the nose. Let me actually say words with my face. That one caught me off guard. All right, there's so. A, there's like a, a, a candied floral. It actually smells more like a a neutral grain spirit spirit whiskey. Yeah. So like a whiskey, like for oh, us, a light whiskey. Oh, could have been. I'm I'm getting gl gleamings of. Canadian? Yeah. So you get the mix of the high grain, high proof distillate yeah. Yeah. with the low flavoring compounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting that. That sort of like icing metallic vanilla. But the taste is really nice. Oh. Oh. Well, vanilla. But remember, icing. vanilla icing is sugar. Within context. Yeah. If you would wanted to convince me that this was a cheap budget Canadian whiskey, it could happen. It could totally happen. Right. But because I'm coming at it thinking, oh, a rice spirit, I'm not sure I'm gonna like it. Right. I'm I'm sort of pleasantly surprised. Right. But we're in. But side by side, we're in budget Canada right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be your your closest analog. Interesting. Yeah, it is super interesting. All right, was that the last one? That was the last one. Okay. Deep breath. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal, lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with, with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.